China is facing pressure globally to crack down on its so-called wet markets where produce and live animals are often sold together. Scientists have speculated that the current coronavirus outbreak in humans might have begun at a market in the city of Wuhan. One hypothesis is that the virus could have jumped from bats to pangolins to people, in turn causing a global health emergency. I think yep. they should shut down those things right away. We can clearly see the great risks to the health and well-being of the rest of the world. As the virus spread in January, China responded by slapping a ban on the trade and consumption of wildlife. Some of the markets were also temporarily closed. In the months since, they've been reopening with new restrictions. But analysts say it's not yet clear whether China will really clamp down on what's being sold inside in the long run. The big question is, now that there has been this uh, temporary ban, will it then be enshrined um, through an amendment um, into the wildlife uh, protection law. The devil is sort of in the details of how you would then enforce not only the current um, measures, but also any legal um, change or legal amendment. It's unclear how many markets were affected by the ban on trading wildlife. But experts estimate that the markets selling live wild animals before the outbreak could have numbered in the hundreds. No one really has been able to put their arms around and quantify the size of the wild uh, trade market, the wild meat market. What you know, the, the journal Nature, for example, um, fairly recently valued it at the, the, the wild meat market at around seven billion U.S. dollars. Then you have the larger wildlife farming industry, um, and that's much larger. Before the outbreak, China's leadership had promoted the wildlife industry as a way to help rural people escape poverty. Shutting down this multi-billion dollar industry now takes Chinese officials into difficult territory. They're not just banning wildlife markets, but also clothing thousands of farms, where wildlife animals are bred, which deprives people of work and income. Government should, you know, compensate, especially those uh, farmers that were raising the the, the 54 uh, species that were allowed to be traded. Government should compensate um, the the farmers, not in the way of money, but they should uh, find alternative livelihood for these people. This is the biggest public health threat to the country uh, since the founding of the People's Republic of China in the last uh, 70 years. So the government recognized the tremendous you know, public health impact to 1.4 billion people. The uh, prime minister's office decided to ban wildlife trade, but also China's National People's Congress, which is a national legislature, issued a ban on wildlife trade and wildlife consumption. But critics say these moves are provisional and don't go far enough. A key question is whether China will adopt the provisional policies into its legislation that governs the trade in animals, the wildlife protection law. Revisions to the law are expected in the coming months. Experts claim it has contained loopholes for years. The three major points we make, that is the three major loopholes. We, in the past, we protect the endangered species. That's not right. We should protect all the wildlife, fur business, uh, tourist business, medicine, meat business. That's not for eating, but that part should also be controlled, should also be banned. If loopholes for using wildlife products and traditional medicine remain in place, it could mean the trade in animals continues despite the moves to clamp down. So this industry has been 
in the last 40 years able to you know present to the society certain animal products to be good for your health good for fighting cancer good for your beauty good for you know uh, fighting you know um, you know sexual dysfunction and so on and so forth Chinese traditional medicine has been seen as a big driver of the country's wildlife market. Overall, there are other concerns about China's ability to restrict the wildlife industry. Critics say too few resources are available to patrol the industry adequately. And others fear that history will repeat itself. In 2003, at the height of the SARS epidemic, the government issued a temporary ban on parts of the animal trade likely responsible for the disease. The ban was lifted only a few months later. Will it return? I would think yes, particularly on the traditional medicine side and uh, from the perspective of the, in the rural areas, it is quite difficult to, for, for the government to shut them down given their importance economically to uh, different communities and the demand of also very wealthy people for a lot of the product. It, it, that's, a, that's an uphill battle. And I'm not sure that the party and the, and the government have learned the lessons of the past uh, from SARS and other H1N1 and other uh, viruses. But others say the unprecedented global impact of the novel coronavirus may prompt a true change in course. What we have in fast in 2003, and uh, they push back, and but this time they're not going to win. People, more, more and more people realize after COVID-19, it's never been the same. And uh, the top leaders, the government, and the majority of the civil society realize this is not right. This pandemic really um, is a wake-up call. It, it's different from last time when after SARS, uh, last time it was uh, certain places wildlife markets were closed. But this time it, it, it's, it's going to be different. Thank you.